and the music got cut off again. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live almost daily show. And I'm saying almost because we're going to be changing the, the, the schedule here a little bit. A daily show here on YouTube on photography, video, and all things camera related because it's kind of fun that way. So um, you just heard the intro music cut short. I've got something that I need to figure out, um, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to solve this problem, but I am now running at 60p. We're now running 1080 60p, which is a new thing for the show. And uh, hopefully it looks good and looks better for those watching live. We're also simultaneously running at ultra low latency. So we should have a near real time connection with the chat and me babbling away. Um, because of the 60p, that's what screwed with the music. It's a whole music and tr- we don't need, to, you don't need to know. But anyway, I've got to fix that. But because also of the 60p switch, we are down one source. You, we do not have the chat screen for me to pull up side by side. I can't get that one to sync at 60p. So I've got to either get another adapter or figure that out. But everything else, my close up camera, studio camera, this camera, computer, iOS devices are all running at 60p. So we're only down one source. So we'll we'll see where this goes. So unfortunately, I can't bring up the comments here that are coming by. But uh, suffice it to say, I am seeing your comments. I will still read them. As always, if you're watching live, you have a comment you want me to address in the show, type at photo Joseph in front of it. Today's show is about iOS 11. It's a first look. Let's please keep the questions to iOS 11. We'll come back and do camera stuff another day. I'd realize I just said it's a camera show. We're doing iOS 11. But you know, there's cameras in these things. So I'm going with it. Um, if you have questions that are not related to iOS 11, please hold on to them. You can stick them in a comment on another video. I will try to address them as quickly as I can, or we'll just save it for another show. Apologies if you had something you really were gagging to ask today, but let's try and keep this concise and to the point. Um, everybody, good morning. Bart, good morning. Jay Diggity, Urban Sully, Martin, Bart, I, John Morby, everybody's here. Still no 4K? Give me a break, John. Um, <laughs> my advertising budget is not high enough. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Adrian Bart, everybody's here. This is awesome. Okay. Let's, um, oh, let me get this thing running. That is running. Let's just do this. So, iOS 11. It came out yesterday. It was released yesterday. I had zero problems updating my iPad and my iPhone. I know there was a day where you would try to update. It would take hours and hours to download, and then it would fail, and you, it was just it was because Apple servers were overloaded. Whatever they've been doing, building server farms on the moon or whatever it is they do these days, it's working because I downloaded on the iPad in the middle of the day, and that took, I don't know how long it took, but it was totally reasonable. And then I did it in the evening, it was pretty late, it was probably 9 or 10 o'clock at night that I did it to my phone, and it's a 2 gigabyte download, I believe. It was done in about two minutes. I couldn't believe how quickly it downloaded the update, and then obviously it takes a few minutes to do its thing, but I would say within 15 minutes of starting at the most, I had the phone, the iPhone up to iOS 11. So far, I've obviously only had minimal time with it. I have scoured the internet for the top things to show, and some of them I have played with. Some of them I have a note of things that we need to play with, and I haven't done it yet, so it's going to be a little exploration together and see how things go. And um, I will occasionally be turning off the screen while I set something up because I can't just, I like, I want to show you stuff in mail, but I can't just launch mail because, you know, <laughs> it's my mail. So, you know, there will be times where the screen goes dark, but that is why. Um, That is hopefully syncing over, and I think we're ready to go. I'm just waiting for my notes to sync up here, but I guess we'll just pull them up from here while that's happening. And we'll take a look at all the cool things that we've got to look at. That is not the note that I wanted. There it is. Oh, I was 11 show. Now it's loaded here. All righty. So let's, um, let's, Ryan, bag, the front pocket of the brown bag. There's my Apple Pencil, please. I forgot to grab that. Uh, Bart says you're watching in 60p, but it doesn't look much different. Might look full 60p after it's encoded by YouTube after live is done. Well, that would be curious. Thank you. Mm-hmm. If it's, you should see, I mean, especially when I'm, you know, doing this, like on my screen, it looks so smooth and buttery, but it should look good on your end. That's curious if it's not looking any better. If it's not looking any better, then what's the point? Hopefully it looks better. Anyway. Okay, let's see. What do we want to do first? Let's, uh, let's look at... Let's look at, let's put this in Do Not Disturb. Let's look at Notification Center because that, <laughs> it took, took me a second to find it on iOS, on uh, the iPad, just to show you that. So let's switch over to, that's the wrong one. Darn it. Ah, I didn't get it all set up right. Poop. All right, we'll go there. All right, so here is the iPad. We're looking at the iPad. You're looking at the new dock down at the bottom. What you'll find is you open an app. Let's just go into Safari. We'll tap that up. So there's my web page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I want to go to another app, I simply swipe up from the bottom a little bit and there's the dock and I can easily switch to another app. So I can tap on Lightroom. That's going to switch over to Lightroom. 
uh, which hasn't been loaded recently. Oh, yes, you do have permission. I can swipe up again there, and oh, that was interesting. It brought up another, huh. I guess some apps are gonna bring up a little uh, little extra wiggity there. Let's go over to, wiggity is the official term, by the way. Um, that was set up as a sidebar, so we'll come to that later. Let's, uh, let's go into, let's get rid of that sidebar there. Let's go into the browser, the file browser, because that's a cool new thing to see. And we bring this up again, and if you go back, tap on photos, it brings back the photos thing just because it happened to be over there. But that's still not really where I want it to be. I'm still having a hard time figuring out exactly how to get rid of that. Let's go to, can I do calendar? I can't do calendar. Let's go to, um, let's go to pages. There's a recent app. There's a brilliant test document. So you see your recents over on the right-hand side. So that's the ones, the three over there. We've got notes, safari, and um and pages as a recent on the left of the things that I've put into the doc. But so far, all I've done is swipe up a little bit and it brings it up. Let me bring it down and swipe up a bit farther and that's where you get into the new switcher, which is really quite cool because it allows you to much more quickly than before find the app that you want to switch into. So you know, switch over to Twitter, um, switch over to you know, whatever app you want, and there you go. So this is really neat. I like this a lot. Swipe, swipe up a little bit, it brings up the doc swipe up a lot, and it brings up the full switcher. So let's go back to, let's open up Safari here, go full screen on Safari, and let's say that I wanna bring my notes up next to it. So I bring up the dock, there's my notes hanging out there on the dock. I tap on this, just kind of a slightly long tap, very, very briefly long tap, and you see I've got this little guy showing up. Now I can put this on either side of the screen, let's just put it over on the right here, and I let go, and it hovers. So now it's just kind of hovering there, there's my list of all the things I wanna show you today. So there it's hovering, but you see it's over the existing page, right? So it's not, it hasn't moved the page, it's just hovering over that. I can continue to navigate in Safari or whatever it is I'm doing and that hovering thing stays there. If I wanna get rid of it, now this is one of the curious things I'm trying to find out the best way to do it. If you just tap on the device, and I know you can't see my, my finger and that's really annoying, but I'm tapping on the center of the notes, it doesn't do anything, tapping on the top and dragging doesn't do anything. You have to tap, you have to drag from the side off screen a little bit and drag in, and then that's when you grab the actual floating tablet. So you're you're dragging from outside of the bezel, which makes you wonder what it'll be like when you have bezel-less iPads. You just swipe off from the, off of the screen. Anyway, so we go here and I swipe from the edge off, and now I can move this thing, I can move it to the other side if I wanted to. Now curiously, if I swipe, oh no, it does work. If I swipe over from the left side, now I can move that back. So I can, again, swiping from off screen, I can move that around. And sometimes it doesn't quite grab it. So I think there's a little bit of finicky finding out exactly what. And if you swipe far enough, as you saw there, it just disappears. Now, interestingly, I can swipe back and it comes back again. So let me put this over on the right-hand side where I want it. And now I want to get rid of it. So I think the way to get rid of it is to swipe left a little bit and then back to right again. So you're kind of pushing the drawer out and then back. So it's like you're going, oh, get out here. Eh, get out here. It's a curious movement that you have to do, but pull it out and get rid of it. Curious movement, but it works. Now let's bring this out. Let's say you want to do this the traditional way. You want to have a normal split screen. The bar at the top there, if I tap on that and start to drag down, see now how I have a, a more traditional split screen view. And so I can go ahead and just drop this here, or can I do it right now? I can't move to the other side now. Okay, when I first bring it in, I can move it to the other side, but I guess not at this point. So there it is there, I can do, this is standard split screen. Um, I can make it on, make it short or, or skinny or wide on either side or an even split down the middle. And that is ready to go. Um, I'm seeing a comment in here that solely saying that uh, you're not seeing iOS 11 is available. It says it's only 10.33 is available. As far as I know, it's available, well, oh, Sully, I forget, what country are you in? You're in the US, aren't you? Um, he's in Connecticut, yeah. Does your device support iOS 11? That could be a problem. I don't know, otherwise, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, just go back to this, and so again, I pulled down a little bit, and it gives me that split, so I can have that proper split in there. From here now, if I pull down again on that, it goes back into this kind of floating mode, so I can switch between those. So now, let's do this. Let me, let me just bring this back into the split view. Actually, no, I don't wanna do that. Well, first, I want to get rid of this. And let's get rid of that entirely. Let's bring up the dock again. Let's say I wanna do the same thing with photos, but I don't wanna go from photos into the floating. I wanna go straight into the split view. So if I go a little bit farther to the edge, on the right or on the left, I can force that into that split view location immediately. So you don't have to go first into floating and then into split. It just depends on where you drop it, whether it goes 
into floating or directly into split. Um, once you're in split, I don't know if you can, can you get back to floating easily? Let's see if we're in split. Yeah, yeah, right. If I pull down on that, it goes into floating. Right, perfect. Pull down on it again, it goes into split. So that's quick. From the top, pull down, floating, pull down, split. That's kind of cool. If I want to change the side, that's probably the easiest way would be to change it from, oops, get out of here. Change it from thing to split. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that seems to work. Yeah, that works out pretty well. Okay, so now I can actually bring up a third screen, and this is kind of wild. So I'm going to bring up notes, and this time I'm going to leave them floating. See, over here it wants to replace the split, but if I put it over on this side, see it shows as a floating thing? So let's see if I get this right. There we No, that did a replacement. There's a way to get it to do both. No, it's not going to do it for me, is it? Darn it. I had this working before. Oh, wait, there we go. Got to get the right position. There it is. So now we have essentially three apps on screen at once. We've got Safari here as a floater, which I can get rid of. Then I've got my pictures. Then I've got my notes on here. That's all good. Swipe over from the side of the screen. There's Safari. So this would be ideal if, let's kind of swap this around. Let's say that I was doing something. Let's, let's try and do this a little bit more sensibly. Let's say that I wanted to, let's do this, and let's put my... Safari here, I'm browsing in Safari and I'm looking at pictures, but I am also simultaneously, I'm keeping an eye on my checklist, but I don't have to have that checklist up all the time. So I can I can have that off on the side of the screen there. I can be doing what I'm doing here, doing what I'm doing here, pull up my checklist, right? I've done that. Actually, I haven't, so we'll check, we'll check that off. I've done that, swipe it off, and away we go. So this is definitely, definitely going to take some getting used to because it's a much more complex methodology. And this, by the way, is all iPad. This stuff doesn't happen on iPhone. But the fact that you can have even a third app up on screen, even just as an overlay without having to actually switch apps, is really quite cool. Now, this said... Let's go back to iOS view here, and I'm going to go bring all the way up in the dock. Notice that we're seeing Safari and Photos as a split screen up there in the top right. This little guy here, that's set up. So now let's go do something else. Let's go to Pages, and let's say I'm working on Pages, and I'm going to bring up another thing here. Now, I don't know if I can simultaneously bring up Photos and Tube. We're going to find out right now. I'm going to bring up Photos. Oops, I didn't really want to do that. I really wanted to do that. And let's make this a bigger one. So let's say I'm working on a document. I am I am busy writing, and I'm also working. I'm going to add photos into that. If I swipe this up all the way, hmm, oh, it didn't save. I was hoping it was going to save multiple splits. So pages and photos. I was hoping it was going to save multiple splits with photo views in it, but apparently not. Let's try multiple splits with Safari and let's just say notes. We'll bring. Um, yeah, let's bring notes up into this. So I'm going to introduce that as a split immediately. Let's make that half and half screen and now swipe up all the way. So there we have dual split. So we can have multiple layouts kind of saved, if you will. Not really saved, but multiple layouts there with splits, but you can't have an app showing up on multiple places. That's kind of a bummer, really. I would like to see photos be able to see photos next to pages and simultaneously see photos next to mail, for example. That would be quite useful. I don't know why they can't, they can't do that. Well, they don't. Anyway, so that's there. Again, I've seen a lot of comments fly by. Remember, if you have something you want me to address, make sure you type out photo just in front of it. Otherwise, I will not. So just FYI. Okay, so there's the whole split screen thing. Let's go back to this. And uh, that's pretty slick. So let's go back to, to this view here. And let's try the multiple drag and drop. So let's go down to a couple of favorite photos here. And if I want to drag and drop a picture on, I can just tap on it and drag it over. And this is really a big deal out of, out of what we can do now with, with iOS. But it's just drag and drop like that. But it's not just a single photo. So let's say I'm going to tap on this one. So now I've got this picture. Now I can do this with a second hand or with the same hand if you're dexterous enough. I'm going to tap on another picture and it goes, see it says two, and I'm going to tap on another picture, it goes to three, and I'm going to drag those over and you may have to download these because they're probably, yeah, see those aren't even downloaded yet, so it's downloading this from my cloud. And there are all three of our pictures in there. That is pretty darn cool. And of course, it's going to work for mail. It's going to work um, anywhere where you can drag and drop stuff in. And obviously, third-party apps may have to do some updates to support this. We're looking at all native Apple apps right now, but you know, it came out yesterday, so let's not get carried away. So that's pretty cool. Drag and drop, simultaneous tapping on, on some multiple things. This also works in the file browser. Let's take a quick look at the file browser here. So let's open that up full screen. So um, let's say I wanted to 
move this picture. Actually, no, I take that back. I was having trouble getting this to work in Final Fantasy. So first of all, okay, I've got this picture selected. Now I'm going to use my other hand to scroll because I want to put something down in you know, this folder here. I think if I tap on a second picture now... Oh, no, there we go. It is working. So again, now I've got three pictures here. I want to put those into that folder, whatever it may be. You have access like that. So multiple drag and drop there. Also, notice over here on the file browser, over on the left-hand side, we are looking at all these other sources, these input sources, as essentially first-class citizens, right? You can get to your Google Drive, you can get to Dropbox, OneDrive, uh, what's currently on your iPad, your iCloud Drive, and, well, recently deleted. If I tap Edit in there, I can hide any of those. More might come, but I mean, those are all the big shared services, of course. And since, like right now, if I go to Dropbox, it brings up this little screen. I'm hoping, I don't know, but I'm hoping that they'll be able to update it so that it shows up just like iCloud as a full file browser off on the side and not this window within a window. Because effectively, all we've done right now is launched an app. We've kind of launched the um, the Dropbox browser window inside of another app, which sucks, especially since it's smaller. Hopefully, that will be able to be updated so it shows up like everything else. This is the kind of thing we're just going to have to wait and see. Say again, Mark? Uh, yeah, no, I know. It's the long lower thirds because of my presets. It's just, just photo apps expert lower thirds today. Go to photo, photo apps expert if you haven't uh, been there before. Um, okay, so there's there's some basics on the file browser. Other things we see on the file browser that are kind of cool is, let's cancel that. You see your tags down there, your color tags and so on. So if I tag one of these things, it'll bring up whatever... Uh, uh, files, graphics, and so on, you have tagged that, which is really, and I, which I haven't been using very much, but now that these are cross-platform like this, is something I might be using a little bit more. So I think that's that's pretty cool. All right, let me look at my notes here. I have looked at, we've looked at, um, I haven't looked at much yet, have we? Control Center. Uh, let's look at, oh, well, we didn't even, I, that's what I was going to do is Control Center. I didn't even get into it. Let's get into Control Center. So Control Center, if I swipe up to bring up the switcher, you see on the right the Control Center. Now, this is nice here on the iPad, but I actually want to show this to you on the iPhone because that's where I think it gets really quite cool. Oh, shoot. Um, I did not think this through very well. This is not... Sorry, I have to redo a cable here because I just realized that I'm trying to route a cable a direction that I can't. So give me one second here. Let me pull this up. We're just going to have this big old HDMI table laying across the table where clearly I have not yet finished rewiring everything for my 60p switch. And again, hey, let me know, 60p, how's it looking out there? Is it looking clean? Is it looking good? Are you seeing stutters? Are you seeing any difference? And so on. Okay, give me this, give me this, plug this into here. This is one very big, heavy duty HDMI cable. And let's plug in the iPhone. All right, wait for that to sync up on the screen. You can show up anytime now. Come on, I know you work. There it is. And hopefully that works. Excellent. Wait, that is not right. Darn it. Okay, we're just going to have to go to this screen. <laughs> All right, so notification center here. I swipe up from the bottom, and there's my notification center. Now, here's something really, really neat about this. So we see the volume. Okay, I can just drag. I can just... Can I just drag on it? I guess I can. I guess I have to put force push on it. I thought... Oh, it's because it's connected to the dock. That's why. All right, brightness. There, I can't adjust volume because I'm connected to the dock. Brightness, I can just tap and drag on that. I can also force touch on that, and it brings up a bigger screen. It also gives us another option there. You see you've got the night shift, which you're not going to see any difference there. But we've got night shift enabled. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't show up on your screen. Um, if I do something like uh, the music player, so I can obviously just hit play on there. I don't even know if it's going to play. But if I force touch on that, it's going to open up to a larger interface. So I get a little bit more control. On the top left, where you've got your airplane mode, your um, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, if I force touch on that, it opens up a larger device, larger screen. So airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, and personal hotspot. Cellular data you can turn on and off. That's interesting that that's now uh, something on the on the uh, notif oh, notification center. But there you go. Oops, good job. I just turned that off. So we got that on there. Uh, let's see here. Do not disturb if I force touch doesn't do anything. It flashlight, let's do flashlight. Force touch on flashlight, we get our brightness adjustment on the flashlight there. Uh, force touch on the timer. So if I actually if I just tap the timer, it's gonna launch the timer. Let's go back into this. If I force touch on the timer, it brings up a quick little set here. And it's nice. It's got um, a little haptic feedback on there as I'm adjusting that. That's really feels quite good. And I can start the timer from there. 
calculator, I can bring this up and you see it says copy last result or just launch it. So if I've done some kind of, I guess I can't do that. If I've done some kind of calculation in here, um, five divided by 12 for some reason, and now I go back into here, swipe up, there's that last result hanging out there so I can copy that. It also launches it, it's a little weird. Hmm. Okay, let's bring this back up. Camera, if I just happen, it's gonna launch it. If I force touch on the camera, it goes, I've got straight up options to go into selfie, record video, record slow-mo, or take portrait. So that's a nice quick access to that. And then you see HomeKit underneath it because I do have HomeKit things installed. But this is not where notifications end. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, this is cool. But then I realized you have an immense amount of customization control over this. And this is really cool. So let's go back into this. I'm gonna open up settings. And first thing I wanna show in settings, let me actually just reset this. Oops, I'm kind of giving the ghost away on something here. We'll come back to that later. Uh, let, me, let me force quit settings entirely to make sure we're starting from scratch. I launch it and what actually did that? Hold on a second. Maybe I'm misthinking mis here. Yeah, okay, we still don't get the search on the top right away. I was, for some reason, I was thinking because it was always showing up there that search was immediately showing up. You no longer had to pull down for it, which to me is kind of dumb that you have to pull down to find the search because frankly, there's so many settings. I think most people want to search for settings instead of digging through. But anyway, once it's up, I just pull down a little bit. And of course there's search just like before. So I'm going to, why does this keep showing up like that? Stay there. I'm going to go, I'm going to search for, um, uh, not notif notification center. What was it called? Um, Great, now I've forgotten what the stupid thing was called. Control Center. So if I couldn't find it, I go in here and I type in Control Center, and there's Control Center. Okay, so access within apps, okay, but then customize. Look at all these other apps that we can add in here. Uh, I add Alarm, Apple TV Remote, Do Not Disturb While Driving, we'll be talking about that. I'm gonna add a couple. I'm gonna add um, Screen Recording, which we'll try to remember to play with. I'm gonna add a wallet, which is really, really important to me to have that access because I use Apple Pay all the time. And I don't know, let's add stopwatch as well. So we've just added three things in there. So now when I swipe up, there's a whole bunch of new controls down there. There's my Apple wallet, so I can more quickly get to my pays on there. That's excellent. Get out of there, please. Um, I can bring up, of course, the stopwatch, launch it, or let's see if I force press on that. It doesn't do anything. Actually, I force press on wallet. Oh, that's cool. Force press on wallet will brings up my default card. Okay, that's nice. Um, screen recording. So this is something I haven't played with yet, but apparently we can now easily record our screen. Three, two, one. It is now recording the screen, apparently. Excellent. Have not played with this yet, so we'll just do that. Swipe up screen recording and stop that. Nope, it started again. Hmm, curious. Is it recording? One would assume it's recording. One would assume that it is. But then I bring it up. It just wants to do a countdown again. Well, I'm confused. Uh, that apparently is something I'm going to have to play with a little bit. If I go into the, the here, yeah, I'm not seeing any new screen recordings. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll come back to that some other day. Here's something I talked, took this screenshot because I wanted to show you. When I first launched the contacts, it said contacts are no longer updated by Facebook. So you know you had this capability to have your Facebook account linked to your phone and be able to see your Facebook contacts show up in here. Now, in my experience, it was never reliable. It was one of those things where I'd force it to refresh and said, oh, 300 contacts have been updated. Why didn't you do that automatically? But then I'd look and they weren't updated. So maybe that's why they pulled it out, but it's not there. I would rather they just fixed it. Or maybe this is one of those pissing matches between Apple and Facebook, who knows. But, but point is, you're going to see this dialogue first time you launch it if you've connected to Facebook previously. Contacts are no longer updated. Do you want to keep the photos and other information for 220 Facebook contacts in your iCloud account? I just hit keep because I was kind of afraid to not hit keep, but, um, but there you go. All right, so Notification Center, anything else I want to touch on in there? I don't think so. I think that's enough for that for now. So let's see here. We took a look at that. Um, oh, this is, what's not notifications? What's that called? Um, whatever that's called. Now, but I do want to look at something in Notification Center. This is pretty neat. So let me go to my lock screen. Okay, so I don't know about you, but for me, I wake up in the morning and try not to look at my phone first thing. But once I do look at my phone, there's obviously a bunch of notifications, things that came in overnight. I want to scroll through them to make sure I see them all before I tap into any of them. Because let's say that you, uh, let's say you open a mail message. Let's, let's do something more mundane. Let's say you, you see a tweet, you got a push notification for a tweet, and you see it and you tap on it because you want to read it. Well, you have push notifications for tweets enabled for only specific accounts because you actually want to pay attention to those. 
But once you've opened that one message, all the other ones are now gone. They've all cleared out. And so I basically was in this habit in the morning. I would go through all my notifications carefully before I exited out of there because I knew that I wouldn't see the same ones again once I tapped into one. Does that make sense? It's a little, it's just, I mean, it's kind of, that's just what I did. Anyway, what's changed now though, so I bring up notifications, I, I mean, I bring up the lock screen, and if I swipe up, you get this earlier today, and you see all the other notifications that were flying by in there, which is really quite cool in there. And this works as well when I'm on the home screen and I pull down, notifications look like the lock screen. They no longer have a different interface. It's the same notifications that you see on the lock screen. So definitely some differences in there, which are a little bit curious, but, uh, but I like it. I like that I can get to those previous notifications more easily. I'll see if it actually makes any kind of difference, but that's what, uh, that's what I've experienced. Okay, uh, we are just completely randomly going around things on here. Um, D&D, do not disturb while driving. Let's talk about this. So I loaded this up last night, and then when I drove home, once I got home, it popped up a thing that says, hey, do you want to do enable do not disturb while driving? Pretty cool. But let's look at the actual settings for that. So let's go back to this. I'm going to open up the settings and let's just search for do not disturb, do not disturb. There it is. Do not disturb while driving even comes up right away. And you see it down there in the lower kind of lower half. It says uh, do not disturb while driving, activate, and you can have it activated automatically when connected to car Bluetooth or manually. So I'm leaving it automatic. So that means when the phone thinks that you're driving, it will deactivate it. Uh, it will activate it. Now, if you're in a car and you're a passenger, it's going to try and activate it, so you're gonna to have to dismiss it, which is why that only when connected to Bluetooth is nice. If you're on a car that was made in the last, I don't know, 10 odd years or whatever that has Bluetooth, <laughs> mine isn't, um, then you, your car connects to your Bluetooth and that will automatically activate it. That'll save you the hassle of getting in someone else's car and not being the driver and having it activate. Uh, but either way, it's just one tap to dismiss it if you want to dismiss it, if it does activate unintentionally. But this is really good, I like this. Now, if we go back into the settings, underneath that you'll see it says auto reply to no one, recents, favorites, or all contacts. So if you're in the middle of a conversation, actually I think recents is a really good option. So if you're in the middle of a conversation with someone and you jump into the car and they give you another message and they're like, what's going on, man? I thought we were talking, where'd you go? Then it can automatically reply to a message. I like that, I'm leaving it on recents. Now, once, if it's auto going to auto reply, what does it say? Auto reply by default, it says, I'm driving with do not disturb while driving turned on. I'll see your message when I get where I'm going. Um, they will then, and you can customize that message, but they will then get something that says if this is urgent, do something, I don't actually know what, but do something and that'll pass through and then the message comes through. Pretty cool there, I like that. Okay, so that was DND while driving. Um, let's see here. Let's look at, oh, whoa, Fenwick, you are a good man, Fen. Thank you very much for that. Fenwick has, has lovingly discovered the, uh, the super chat button, which is down on the bottom left, which I can't show you because I can't bring up the screen, but, uh, but I really appreciate it. Wait, does that mean dinner's on me next Wednesday? Is that how that works? I really appreciate it, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. Let's uh, take a look at some of the comments. David Englund is saying, what about Bluetooth connect to my radio? Is it any Bluetooth connect? I don't know anything about Bluetooth Connect. I don't know what the difference is that between regular Bluetooth. So apologies, I do not know. Uh, Fenwick, thank you, brother. You're you're a king. Let me scroll back up. Michael Siebel says, people who use Office 365 should wait with the upgrade since iOS 11 has an issue there. Go to support.apple.com slash en-u. Okay, look at the comments. Support.apple.com slash en, for English, dash us, slash, uppercase, ready? H T. 208136. Seems to affect only some people, works at least for me. Okay, well, if you're using uh, Office 365, check that out. I'm not. Tyler says that I try 3D touching the screen record button. It's a good point. Let's try 3D touching the screen record button. Start recording, screen recording, start recording. All right, let's just try it since you've told me to. Um, we'll just start recording. I get the countdown. Three, two, one. It doesn't look like it's recording. It looks like the stop button. I hit it again. See, it doesn't say stop recording. Huh. All right, I have absolutely no idea. Interesting. Well, that is something I'm going to have to figure out. Um, oh, SR Digital says, I wasn't going to say anything since you originally changed to low latency. The show has suffered with a stutter. Um, okay, so the stutter was with the ultra low latency in the beginning, and then we switched, we turned it off for a week or a week and a half. We went back to ultra low latency, and I asked a few times if there was a stutter, nobody said that there was. But if you're seeing a stutter now, 
I need to know this. These are the things that I need to know. This is why I'm asking you guys live if it's there. Um, okay. John, is it because I'm using, oh, it might be because of the output. That's a very good point. Let me just disconnect it. That is a very good point. Turn on the screen recording, start recording. You're, that is probably absolutely what's happening. And now it's recording. Okay, so now let's go for, um, come here, you switch the presets, go for the close-up camera. Now you can see that it is doing a screen recording. So thank you very much, John. You have saved the day. That is fabulous. Thank you. Okay, stop recording. There we go. Got it. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Chris Fenwick says, I have video and it's on the internet. It looks great. Well, thank you. I do. I, I am concerned, though. I want to make sure that it is nice and smooth. If the ultra low latency is causing an unnecessary stutter, then we'll turn it off. We'll go back to the regular latency. Uh, but this is what I want to know these things. Thank you very much. Quentin says, it's definitely not 60p. Hard to tell exactly what the frame rate is. More like 30. YouTube does think it's a 60p stream. So frames are probably getting duplicated. Okay. So that could be simply an encoding thing on my side. I wonder, I wonder if we need to make another change in Wirecast. Ooh, I'll bet we do. Okay. Okay, Ryan, make a big old note. Check Wirecast settings. I'll bet that's it. I'll bet we don't have 60p enabled somewhere in the settings in Wirecast. Good. Okay. Joshua says, when you schedule events, make sure to check the 60 FPS box. I did. We did check the 60 FPS box. It's all set up on the on the YouTube side, as far as I know. Um, and Quentin says, maybe not enough USB bandwidth for all 60 frames from the capture card. Well, the capture card is the Epifan AVA.io, which does support it. So if it supports it, then it should be enough bandwidth for it. So uh, we will we will see. We will see. Okay, back to it. So um, there is... There is that we did that. Let's do well, let's do SOS. I like this. While we're on the do not disturb while driving, should something tragic happen while driving, you have a new SOS mode. So let's go back to this. And um, let's go for, I'm just going to type in SOS, emergency SOS. Auto call. So apparently it's going to auto call. I'm not quite sure exactly how this works. Auto call. You may still need to specify an emergency services to dial when using emergency SOS in certain regions. So auto call, I guess if you're in an accident, the idea is that it's going to automatically call whoever's in your emergency contacts. Those are people that you would have set up in your, um, this is at the bottom there, edit emergency contacts and health. So you can set that up there. It also says rapidly click the sleep wake button five times to quickly call emergency services. So this also, let's go back to the regular wake screen. This is also how you disable touch ID or face ID in a pinch. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's go back to this. I'm going to hit the lock button five times. Oh, let's wait. Well, okay, we'll lock it. Let's just lock it. Okay, and then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Boom. Oh, crap. Stop. Stop calling. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, that was dangerous. No, it said, no, there's a countdown to call. They're not going to call me back. Shut up. God, voice in my ears talking in my head. It has, however, disabled touch ID. Okay, well, now I'm very confused. Maybe it's not five. Maybe we can, okay, let's, maybe we, there's a different, because I couldn't find the setting, any settings for the disabling touch ID. Whoa, that was kind of scary. Did you guys hear the, the screaming whistle? Could you hear that out there? Um, oh, good, I just showed you all. Excellent, my password. Well, now I have to change my password on my phone. Thanks, guys. Ryan, why'd you let me do that? I'm going to blame him. Let's see here. One, two, three taps. That doesn't do anything. One, two, three, four taps. That doesn't do anything. Apparently, five taps to call emergency services and disable touch ID. That sounds like a bad idea. Okay, let me turn off auto call and try that again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, auto call has been disabled. We're leaving that turned off. <laughs> emergency SOS, medical ID. So that's good. We can open that up and get my medical ID on there. Or you can get to uh, power off on there as well, um, but this has also disabled Touch ID. So, okay. So unless you are prone to, well, I'm doing it again. Jesus, I am so smart. Great, now I have to change my stupid phone password. Well, what are the odds of you guys getting your hands on my phone, right? Um, I would leave that off unless you are accident prone and know that it's something that you wanna have. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's one of those days. Okay, so that's SOS. Um, let's see what else we're going to do. Let's look at drag and drop text. We're going to switch back over to the iPad for a little bit on here. And let's see what, uh, 
what's going on in here? Something just came up. Um, yeah, Finn's texting me, thank you, buddy, about the phone numbers. I know, I've just put like all kinds of personal info on the screen. Don't call my wife, please. <laughs> she won't answer the phone anyway. Um, all right, let's see here. Drag and drop text, this is cool. So let me bring up a note pad on here and let's just get some other, I don't need some kind of text on here to do, to work with. Um, well, I guess we're gonna create a new note because I don't know what else I can do. This is, I know you don't see the screen, this is t text. This is more text, that works. Okay, let's go back to the screen here and we can just do this full so we're not confusing the issue. Um, let's hide that and oop, not, eh, not what I wanted done. Hide that. Okay, so I select some text like normal. So double tap to select it, select over it, and I want to move this block of text. I can now tap and drag and drag and drop that whole top block of text around. That is nice and kind of one of those finely kind of things that we can do. So yay on that. All right, excellent. There's the drag and drop text that I wanted to show you. Um, let's oh screenshots. I love this. So let's say that I am in. Mm, I don't know. Web page. Actually, this would be good. We'll do this a couple different ways. Let me get a different entry up here. Go to the blog page. Okay, so I'm looking at a web page, and I take a screenshot of this. So uh, power in the home button. Take a screenshot, and then you see this little thing flows down there on the bottom. If I do nothing, it is eventually going to go away. But if I tap on it, it comes up, and now I can mark it up. So I can you know, choose the red color, grab my pen, and I can say look at that and I can circle this and I can switch to blue and get a different size thing and highlight this and so on. And then from here, I can tap uh, share up in the top right corner and share that off through your normal ways, which is really, really neat. I like that a lot. Tap done up in the top left, save it or delete it. I'm done, I don't need this, so I'm gonna delete that. So that's really cool. Another thing that's really cool in here and this I absolutely love is, let's see here, I can bring up the share sheet. Um, Look, there we go. Bring up the share sheet. And I have not looked at this yet, but I saw it listed somewhere. Where is it? There we go. Create PDF. I tap create PDF. And this is going to build a PDF. It's, oh, wow, it's done the whole page. Ooh, cool. It's done the whole page. And I can now mark it up. So I can say, all right, um, make a change to this. And let's scroll through here and uh, grab the yellow and the highlight. And this is rubbish, you know, what were you thinking? Okay, I can type. Anyway, so that's fantastic. And then I can tap the share sheet again, share that and email it to someone and that'll attach it to an email and off we go. That is really, really, really cool. That's one of those things I... It's a regular thing where I will uh, preview something, maybe a web page, a post that I've done, or a, um, a newsletter, anything, and I want to be able to mark it up as I go, even if it's just for myself. Okay, that's gotta change, go fix that, there's a note. This is tremendous, I'm super, super excited about that. So that's cool, all right, so that was, that was markup PDF, we got that, and all we did the screenshots, um, did context not supported by Facebook, Let's do the pen notes, but first let's see what's going on in the comments some more. Um, yes, Jess, everybody has my emergency contact number now. Again, please don't call them. Sorry. We may have to replace this video with a rendered, edited version. Uh, Quentin says, the specs might just be saying that it can ingest, we're talking about the AV.io, ingest 60p even if it can't send all the frames to the computer. Okay, well you could be right. So we, we have to look into this and check it out. I have a feeling though, it's just a setting in Wirecast. I think. I think there's something I need to set 60p on there that I didn't do. We'll find out soon. Just says, can you blur out the phone numbers on the uploaded broadcast? I wouldn't trust internet trolls. Yeah, just you're right. We're gonna we're gonna kill this show afterwards and just I'll have to edit and re-upload. Hopefully, Ryan, you are recording out there. Please tell me you're recording. Please tell me you're recording. Please tell me you're recording. Oh, phew, he's recording. My this is the other problem with the 60p is that my Blackmagic recorder doesn't support it, so I can't actually record this show natively. I could I gotta get my uh, Ninja Assassin plug back in here, then I can, but right now I can't. Um, okay, so Sully says, can you check if the app still refresh when you leave one app, go to open a new app, and then go back to the original app you were using without using the little back button, the previous app button? Um, yeah, is there refreshing? Well, the way it's always been is apps will continue to refresh in the background for a limited time. Um, I don't really have a good way to test that to see if that's extended or not. Um, I don't know. I don't recall hearing anything about it, so I wouldn't expect a change there. Sully also says it would 
Do that for Chrome and Safari. Would refresh the web pages when you go back to Chrome from another app. Losing any data you may have typed in the page. Oh, like an auto refresh. That's again after a certain amount of time that it would do that. So um, I don't really have a good way to test that right now, but hopefully that's that is better handled because yes, you're right. That was not the most convenient thing. Okay, um, let's see here. Pen notes. Let's do that. So if I lock my iPad. Okay, so I got my Apple Pencil here. We're looking at this screen. I tap the home button. I'm just going to tap on the screen. There we go. Tap on the screen, and it brings up a notes. So now I can say, I can say, well, I can say, hello. Now, curiously, palm rejection has been a little bit finicky. Um, okay, now it's working. Here we go. It's actually it's being a little finicky, the palm rejection. Without palm touching, and if I keep my hand off of it, it's much better, much smoother. But for some reason, palm rejection has been a little bit wonky in there. Hmm. Cool. So anyway, so you've got the pen note thing. Uh, and then if I exit out of here, if I want to share it or anything else, it's going to say, hey, touch ID to open notes, and off we go. But I, I like this. I don't, I honestly, I don't know if this is something I would end up using, because I don't really take notes that way. But a certain environment, certainly, this could be very, very handy to have that capability to quickly do that. Okay. Pen notes done. Um, document scanning. I haven't played with this yet. I need. I need a document. I need. I need something. Oh, we'll use this. Rargh. Come here. I can reach it. I can reach it. There we go. Ouch. Okay. Let's just pretend that this is something that I want to scan. These are called undercovers. These are awesome for hiding microphones. Just FYI. Okay. Have not used document scanning yet. We're going to use the iPhone for this. Um, I don't even know how you, this works, actually. I saw it as one of those, oh yeah, that's right, that's a cool feature. Does it just automatically document scan when you're in photo, when, when you take a picture? Because I don't think there's a document scanning mode specifically. Portrait, square, pano, no. Let me just do a quick search for documents, see if there's a, there's a dedicated document scanner. I mean, I have some that I've loaded. I'm not seeing that. All right, well, let's just, uh, let's just find out. Let's just, let's just take a picture. Oops, that would be the stopwatch. I'm used to having the camera there. Let's bring up the camera, and I'll just take a picture of this. So I go, all right, take a picture of that. And no, it didn't turn that into a document scanner. Okay, somebody quick tell me how to do the document scanner thing, because I'm excited I want to play with that, because I, I do document scans all the time with third-party apps. It would be nice to see that integrated in. So somebody tell me how to do that, because I clearly have not done that right. Um, ah, John is saying, thank you, John. All caps works. That definitely saw that. Uh, you have to go into notes and pick the plus icon. Okay. Ooh, okay. So I have to go to notes. Let's create a new note here. Okay. So we're in the new notes. I got a new note. I hit plus. Ah, there we go. Scan documents. Okay. Scan documents. So position view. Well, that's clearly confused. I think that metal table is not doing it any favors. All right. Let's. Hey, Ryan, bring me, just, is there a printed piece of paper, or magazine cover, or anything like that out there? I want something a bit different than this. Oh, there, it grabbed it that time. It did grab it that time. Okay. Let's do a bigger one. Let's do the back of it. That'll work. Hey, you guys in the UK. You guys in the UK. You know this magazine? Practical Photography? Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. See if I can find it. See if I can find it. There's a whole article in here about aerial photography, um, about drone photography, and it starts off with one of my photos and a little article about this picture that I took over 10 years ago, pre-drone aerial photography, back in the dark ages when we had to fly in helicopters. Um, but this article is in here. It's really cool. That's super nice. So thank you, Practical Photography. So practical whoever's in the UK, go buy this magazine. Um, okay, so there we go. We're going to try the document scanner again. Oops. Document scan, we're in. Let's get that up there. So I, it is really kind of freaking out on what that what it should be grabbing there, isn't it? It is really freaking out. Okay, well let's compare that to the document scanner I use all the time. Scannable. You don't really need to see my daycare receipt. Now you know how expensive daycare is. Um, here we go. Well, it's kind of freaking out too. It, well, it did a better job. Honestly, this metallic table is not doing it any favors. Let me, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw it on the ground. And let's just do it that way. So there's the document scanner app that I'm using. Now let me switch over to, oops, let me switch over to notes. Let's uh, try that again in notes, see if it handles that better. 
It is freaking out, isn't it? Well, I guess in some slightly more controlled environments, that might work a little bit better, but we are not having the best of luck with the document scanner, are we? I think I might end up still using Scannable. Highly recommend Scannable. It is awesome. Works really well. I really wish that worked better, but at least for things like, one of the things I do often is if I'm, uh, let's say I'm shopping, I'm in a hardware store, it's a great example. I'm kind of doing research on building something and I'm taking notes for ideas and I'll take pictures of the product and take pictures of the price. It'd be good, I can do a document scanner close up of the price and it might fill it in and drop it right there into the note. That might be handy. Um, I do kind of wish that worked a little bit better though. Mm, oh well. Um, hmm, all right, let's see here. That was, that was document scanning. HEVC enabled. This is an important one. I realize that my mic has just gone wonky. Um, let's go for, let's go back into the camera settings here. Settings, and we don't need that anymore. Let's go to camera, camera settings. So you have on the bottom formats, and under formats you have the option between high efficiency and most compatible. So high efficiency is going to be HEIF that's the replacement for JPEG or HEVC for video, high efficiency video codec or high efficiency image format. The HEVC, that's H.265. The exciting thing about this is that that means that Mac OS Sierra, High Sierra is going to have native H.265 support as well. I was quite surprised to see, however, when I first updated the default, it was left at most compatible. I don't know why it didn't automatically switch over but it was left at most compatible. So I am now gonna switch it to high efficiency because I want it to do that. Now remember, what that essentially means for you is that the pictures take up less room on your phone when you're sharing them via um, mail or whatever. I think it ought, I think it automatically converts it to JPEG because you, you know, who knows who's gonna be getting it. Um, I believe that's how that works, but it, the, for now at least the main thing is it takes up a lot less space on your phone. I think that's kind of where that's at. But you have to enable it. At least I had to. For some reason, it wasn't on automatically. All right, live photos. Now, I'm not gonna. I couldn't find the difference in here with the live photo. But remember, we've got uh, we've got some different things happening in live photos now. There should be that whole long blur thing, so you could do blurs of waterfalls, things like that. Um, I'm gonna do a whole separate video, and this will be one of those recorded videos, like I did with the portrait mode before, because it was so cool when the iPhone 7 Plus first came out. I'll do something like that, shooting, we have fortunately we have a lot of little waterfalls around here, so that'll be an easy one to go out and shoot, and um, I'll do stuff like that on that, and I'll do it as a separate recorded thing. You can, however, in portrait mode, let me bring the camera up here. When, you, when I first fired it up into portrait mode, it brought up a dialogue saying that that portrait data is going to be saved, so let me, let's see if I can, I need a different background here. Um, there we go, let's see here. I'm looking at a different screen. Depth effect, it says it's got it. Okay, let me take that picture. Okay, let's look at the screen. Where is it? Am I centered? Close enough. Okay, so that took a picture. Let's look at that picture, and apparently, okay, it's portrait mode. I can edit, actually it looks really nice. Um, hmm, I don't see anything there to edit the portrait. If I tap the portrait icon, no. Hmm. It said that you had a way to edit the background blur. Maybe it's under here. Light color, black and white, no. Certainly not gonna be under filters or cropping. Well, where the heck is it? That ain't right. Why am I not seeing that ability? It's not gonna be under the more things. Markup, polar, and so on. Auto magic, no. Well, ah, there we go. Okay, up at the top where it says portrait, tap that. And you can disable it, but can you change it? Hmm. Hmm. Cancel that. Let's try one more time. Edit. Tap the portrait to on and off to turn it on and off. But I don't see any way to edit that. I'm just dragging on the screen to see if anything I do there changes it, but it doesn't. Well, maybe that's something that's only supported on a higher end phone, but I thought that was something you're supposed to be able to change later. I do like that you can at least turn it off. You know, let me go into the camera settings and see if there's something in there that I have to enable. Um, back in the camera settings, preserve settings, preserve last use filter, live photo, preserves the live photo setting rather than automatically reset. Okay, that's fine. Camera mode. Hmm. No. Um, SDR Digital saying that Evernote has a brilliant, reliable document scanner. That uh, scannable actually is, I think that is the Evernote one. 
Um, scan QR Oh, good. Scan QR codes. Well, that's cool. You can scan QR codes now. Grid, record video, formats. Okay, well, I'm not seeing anything else about that. Let's just try portrait. See if that gives me anything. No. Hmm. I thought you could edit the portrait mode afterwards. You can at least turn it off. So that's good. So you could just disable it. But um, I thought you'd be able to adjust it afterwards. <laughs> maybe that's only a higher-end phone thing, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Okay. Um... Oh, locked notes. Let's do that. Let's take a look at that real quick. If I go back into my notes pad here, let's cancel out of here. I want to discard that scan. Um, there we go. Uh, you see on down there in the bottom, it says, uh, or in the middle there, you see test two and test notes with a little lock on them. So if I wanted to take this iOS 11 show notes one and lock it, I can swipe left on that and tap the lock button. And it says touch ID or enter password. So I enter touch ID and that lock has been added. Now it has, because I've entered touch ID, all those other ones are unlocked. So see that I can lock it from there. Note is locked back up. Now it does still show the title. That is a very important point. Locking the note does not hide the title. It hides the contents, but not the title. So keep this in mind if you're hiding notes. You want to make sure that your title is not, you know, giving away state secrets. Okay. So there's that. All right. Um, oh, look, and now it's locked it up. Oh, well, that's interesting. It's locked it up over here on Sierra as well, because um, I don't have High Sierra on here yet. And there's a Maxi that there's an iOS 11 show notes. It just locked that up. Huh. Go figure. Great. Enter the password to view this note. I don't even know what password it wants. Oh, right. I had to set up a unique password for it. It's a unique password, separate from everything else. Okay. Hmm. Lock notes. Um, two more things. Insert drawing in mail. So let's let's go back over here to do that. So if you're using the mail app and you want to draw something, apparently you can do that. Haven't played with that yet. So touch ID, enter, there we go. Mail, there's mail. And let's create a new mail message. Um, oh good, there's some mail in here that I need to get. Ha. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Sorry, I'm kind of trying to not show you anything else I'm supposed to show you because I was so brilliant about that earlier. Okay, here we go. So let's bring this up. If I want to do a note, insert a note in here, tap on there and add it to insert drawing. There we go. So I can insert a drawing. I can grab my Apple Pencil and I can say, wee, and done. And insert drawing. And there it is. Slick. Okay, that's cool. So you can easily add that into it. I like it. I like it. So that's that. And then the one-handed keyboard. That is the last thing that I wanted to show you. I thought this was pretty clever. And you might have seen this in the beginning because I kind of accidentally revealed this. But actually, first, let's um, show you how to enable it. So let me go into settings and we'll go into keyboard settings, K-E-Y, keyboard general. And you have um, third item down, one-handed keyboard. You can turn that left, right, or off. So I'm right-handed, so I'll put it on right. And now let's go back over to my notes. And you can see now it's pushed the whole thing over to the side. So that makes it, that makes it easier. That marks that makes it easier. Well, you know what it means. <laughs> it's a type one handed. Um, if I tap that little arrow on the left, it is going to expand it full screen. If I tap and hold on the globe icon, you can see there that I can switch it as well. So I think that's kind of neat. If you're uh, if you need to do things one handed, often on the phone typing, and you got one of the bigger devices like the Plus, it, that can be quite hard to do if you, unless you have really big hands. So I think that's pretty good. Ooh, that's everything I wanted to show you. Okay, well, let's see what's going on. Let's see if I missed anything. Um, hmm. SR Digital saying in the YouTube player window under settings, quality was set to auto. You set it manually to 1080p 60. It seems a little smoother. You think maybe, maybe. But I think, I still think that, I think it's my set. I don't think I'm really feeding out 60p like I should be. Rob Ginelli says, I believe you can set your notes up, notes app up so that it only recognizes the Apple Pencil. You can scroll only with your finger but can't write or mark with it. Right. I saw that. Um, good point. Let me, but I think it was turned on by default. So, yeah, it is turned on. That is how it is now. Because look, um, is that, no, I got the wrong one on. Sorry. Let's go back to this. Because I've got this on. Grab my pencil. Come on, sync up. It takes longer to sync now than it used to with it. Okay, let's back up. So here's this. I've got my Apple Pencil. I can draw. I'm drawing with the pencil. When I touch with my finger, yeah, it's not doing anything. So I have that setting was enabled. 
Oh, look at this, suggested title. Hello, Hone, we edit. That's cool, so it's trying to do a little text recognition. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so finger, it is doing it. It's just that when I've got my palm on it, go back to the pencil, let's go full screen here. Let's go back to the pencil, let's go blue so it's different. I got my palm resting on the screen now. See, look, it's totally sketch. Super sketchy, take my palm off of it and it's flawless. Put my palm back on it and it's definitely sketchy. Now that, okay, you know what, maybe that's, let me just take this off for a moment and see if that gets any better. Palm on it, no, it's not any better. No, not any better. So there's something going on with palm recognition in there that ain't cool. What a bummer. Anyway, I don't write that on it that much anyway, but that's kind of one of those things. Okay. Um, I believe that's everything. Soli's asking if I'm getting the iPhone 8 or the 10. I'm getting the 10. I will be ordering that at the first moment that I can. And that's it. All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. That was uh, that was fun. That, oh, jeez, that was an hour. Uh, I hope that was fun for you. I learned some things. Hopefully, you learned some things. We There's obviously still a lot more to it. These are some of the highlights, some of the things that I found that were things that I was excited about. Um, don't call my friends or family. If you saw those phone numbers pop up, I will now delete this from YouTube, re-edit, and re-upload. Just what I needed to do today. Hey, tomorrow we're not doing a show because I've got a big project with a big deadline tomorrow, and that's just the way it's going to go. Apologies in advance for that. Um, we will come back on Friday, and I'll just do it from in here. So it's not going to be Amiibo Friday. We'll just do it in here. Um, don't forget that next week... On Saturday, I'll be at Image One Camera. Just go to image, just Google search for Image One Camera. We're going to, I think it's ImageOne.com, and you will find this. It is on uh, the 30th. This is in Riverside, Los Angeles area. I'll be there talking about the GH5 version 2. Also, the day before that, at Sammy's Camera in Fairfax. The day before that, I will be doing a presentation with IBM. We'll put a link to this down below in the show notes. I, it is a live streaming event that uh, you can register for. It is on, I don't know why the date's not on this thing, but it is on next Wednesday. Day. And so uh, please do tune into that and that'll be really cool to, to check out. Okay. And oh, right. Someone asked about AR apps. I did download some AR apps. I haven't launched them yet. I forgot. Um, Fenwick saying, worth every penny this valuable resource. I hope everybody can pitch in. What? Thank you, Fenwick. I, I, again, I really appreciate that. Uh, you're awesome. Okay. I did download a couple of AR apps and I totally forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Um, which actually, that's right, I was gonna show you one more thing on here, look at that, see? There's one more thing, there's always one more thing. Remember the multiple app touch and drag, uh, multiple icon touch and drag around? We can do the same thing here, so I've, I've, I've long pressed so it's wiggling, and I'm gonna grab this one, this one that says measure kit, so I drag that, and let's tap on Giphy World and tap on Ikea Place, and you see now there's three things selected, so now I can now move these three around more easily. This is quite awesome. But all three of these are AR kit enabled toys. So let's just launch them and see what happens. Um, show me around. Sure, that's a good idea. Um, tap a gift to add it to your scene or tap and hold it to draw in the air. Show off your scene. Then you can record a video or share the scene. One more thing. Give your world across permission to use the camera. That's okay. And there we go. Okay, so tap on the dope thing. And I've just put dope on the table. Well, that's kind of cool. Let's uh, here, let's put this barfing guy up here or whatever he's doing. That didn't really work out so well. Right, let's get rid of that thing. Let's cancel that. And let's cancel that one. Let's try again. You, go away. There we go. Let's take a rest in peace guy. I guess I just have to tap it and, look, and then I can move it. Can I move it? How do I move it? There we go. Let's put that on the iPad. Well, it's tracking that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, it's a little hokey and cheesy, but it works. All right, that's neat. Um, measure kit, this is supposed to be impressive. Again, have not used this yet. This is a first time launch. Um, trajectory, marker pin, angles. Man, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Okay, let's just do something, something simple. Ruler, measure straight lines and vertical ones. That's what we're gonna do, I tap on ruler. Um, oh, this is just all the instructions. Okay, we'll skip this step. Who needs to read the manual? Measure kit, would like to access your camera, yes. It's thinking, detecting world, please move any around, point camera on any surface, tap to start measuring. Okay, so let's go from that, oh, that missed. Let's try that again. How do I get rid of that? That totally didn't work, that's not what I wanted. Video, no, that's not what I wanted either. Okay, cancel. Ruler, that's what I want, ruler. Let's just try this again. I wanna measure from 
there? No. Oh, okay. All righty, all right, all right. I'm getting it now. You have to, let's undo that. Are you sure? Reset, restart session. Okay. You center it. You're not tapping on the screen anywhere. You're centering the point and then tapping on the screen. Okay. Step, tap to start measuring. So I want to measure from that edge of the pencil to that edge of the pencil. Now I got it. It says it is seven inches. That sounds about right. Let's look at the iPad screen. Let's see here. Let's go from there, diagonal to there, and it says it's 25 inches. Well, believe me, it is not that big of an iPad. All right. Well, maybe that's because there's two things going on. Let's reset the whole thing. No, it's supposed to be tilted. The whole thing is that you have full VR. Okay, point camera on every surface. Let's try this again. Go here. Dot. Let's go here. There we go. That's better. Get that right there. Come on, come on, come on. Get in there. Get dot. What is the diagonal? I think it's not 11.1, is it? Hmm. This may not be the most accurate thing in the world. Well, it's a very, very cool idea, and I guess we will find out later um, how well that works. Love the idea. Love the idea. All kinds of cool AR stuff. And the last one was furniture. Ikea Place. Oops, which just crashed. Ikea Place. Ikea. Ikea. Hey! Thanks for bringing us along. Oh, this is cute. Shall we try some new furniture in here? I don't have a whole lot of space in here, but I'm sure. Let's do it. Seriously, why is it fantastic? Oh, that's great. We just need the camera. Okay, really? Do we really have to go through this chit-chat mode? Here's a couple of things you can do. Just tap to continue. Um, browse furniture. Okay, let's browse furniture. Place furniture. First scan the room. Please aim the camera at the floor. To aim it at the floor. Now move your device around until multiple yellow dots appear. Oh, okay. Move the device around until multiple yellow dots appear. Okay, all right. Let's add some furniture and get started. Cool. Um, plus, let's add a stool. And let's put it right there. Okay, well, it's kind of floating in midair, but... Oh, no, there, now it's dropped. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Let's add something else. Let's add a let's add a wastebasket, because I don't have a whole lot of space here. That is a big wastebasket, but let's put that... Let's put that in the corner there. Put that in the corner. Okay. It's a monstrous wastebasket, but... Now, okay, you got to admit, that is cool. What happens if I stick my foot on it? Can I like rest my foot on the? No, oh, no, can't rest my foot on it. Oh well. Oh, I'm gonna have some fun with that. I'm gonna. That is what a great way to sell furniture. Brilliant. IKEA is thinking on that one. Okay, so there's a couple of AR things. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I had totally forgotten to download those, so I do appreciate that. Appreciate the reminder. Um, Island Boys TV is asking, is the GH5 worth it? Oh yes, yes it is. Okay. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. That was a ton of fun. I uh, hope you learned something. I know I did. That was a good experience. Uh, we'll we'll take closer looks at individual things as we move on. We will do that eventually, uh, especially the camera stuff. And obviously, I'll be revisiting a lot of the stuff once the uh, iPhone 10 comes out. I'm excited to play with the new camera features, especially that whole blur, fake long exposure thing with waterfalls. I think it's going to be really neat. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on Friday because, again, Thursday, I am not doing a show. I got a project to complete. And uh, I might even be able to tell you about it soon. So we'll see. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.